uh, three very, very interesting presentations. Uh, and first up, um, somebody who puts in so much hard work behind the scenes um, is Sun Bradley. Sun, Steve mentioned that your correct, the correct pronunciation is something like Shunchana. <laughs> very good. It's Shunchana. Is that yes, it? it's creation. Yeah, very good. Okay. <laughs> yes. So, um, Shun, lovely to have you with us. And, uh, you know, I've, um, being a member of LEPSOC, um, I've, I've seen quite a lot of the work that you do, but you're very quiet about and humble about all, all it is that you do. So we're looking forward to hearing all about the Caterpillar Rearing Group, um, a, a very committed and dedicated bunch of people. And um, yeah, over to you. So uh, if you can share your screen with us, that would be yeah, good. Yeah, sure thing. Okay, well, hopefully this works. So we're probably going to see yourself for a second. Yep, it's there. Perfect. Okay. Okay, so let me just also click the slideshow. There we go. Perfect. Okay. All good. Okay, cool. Um, so, um, lepidopterist or uh, any kind of um, professional, um, I, don't know, I don't have any professional, I'm uh, sorry, uh, formal education in conservation so I, I, I am just someone who's passionate about this but um, this is a LEPSOC project of which I am a member um, and what it does basically it just combines the efforts of people like me who are not actual scientists but do feel very passionately uh, about um, caterpillars and nature and conservation as well as whatever knowledge um, the professionals have and then uh, once all of that combined we 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 always learn a whole lot more about uh, butterflies and moths and, and the life histories of the same. Um, so yeah, it's, it's just a combination of uh, the knowledge of all of us little um, kind of scientists want to be and the real big deal guys. Um, it started in 2012, so it is now eight years that it's been running, though I myself have, have been a, a member and have been contributing for about, I think, four years. So um, I'm fairly new to it. Um, and the current project leader is Herman. I, I don't think he's on the call, but um, yeah, he is kind of the, the main guy uh, who runs everything um, and does a lot of work behind the scenes, puts all the data and everything together. So. Um, I suppose he is, he, he is the man of CRG. Um, and the big question is why, why do we do all of this is, so um, we do have about 4,000 butterfly species um, in Africa and then tens of thousands of moth species obviously that are known. However, uh, the life histories of the same are pretty much unknown. So when this project started, we knew less than six percent of life histories of um, African moths and butterflies. So when you think about it, that is um, for over a hundred years, we really have, you know, learned less than six percent. However, since the project started, we have doubled that data in seven years. So that is quite an achievement. Obviously, a lot of knowledge, a lot of work went into it, um, and all of that contributes to conservation. So that is the reason why we do it. So all of the data that we connect, collect uh, fills in all the gaps, all of the things that we don't know, which then help uh, conduct all the relevant research, which helps with uh, IUCN red listings. And based on that, we can then protect certain areas um, um, and all of these conservation efforts can move off the ground. So um, it may not sound like much, but when you put it into context, it it has potential to make a really big difference, especially going forward and as we learn more. Um, so it's all um, in the name of conservation and protecting the, the butterfly and moss and their habitats and food plants. So how we do it? So first we find caterpillars. <laughs> um, this is the fun part. So this is probably my favorite part. Um, so this is why if you go hiking with me, you, you get nowhere very slowly because I have to look under every single bush, under every single branch, on every single blade of grass. So um, 
caterpillars you, you really can look for anywhere um, in your garden. Um, Landy can tell you all about that. She's on the call and she doesn't even have a big garden. She she lives in a flat, if, if, I'm, if I'm not wrong, but still she manages to find caterpillars anyways. So um, find them, rear them. Uh, this is the tough part. Uh, this is where um, you kind of have to learn uh, based on your very own mistakes, you have to unfortunately also kill quite a few caterpillars before <laughs> you learn what and how uh, uh, to do and what not to do. And then lastly, you submit the data, which goes to Herman, um, gets put together into um, official documents and then gets used accordingly. Also, we do collect uh, specimens, um, which then get sent to various uh, scientists and experts around the world. So it's not even just a matter of, of um, an, an African project. Um, specimens we collect do, do travel the world. This is one of my caterpillars, by the way, all of the images here uh, are mine. Um, so this is one of the emperor moths and it's here really just to get your attention. So just a little bit of color. So uh, in terms of finding and house and caterpillars, so the very, very important thing um, once the collection happens is recording and photographing every single stage of the process. So we keep notes uh, of anything that is of interest, of anything that is uh, uh, even slightly uh, a bit different to what is expected because you never really know what is known or isn't known about a certain um, um, caterpillar or a certain genus. So everything might matter. Um, all of the dates, so um, obviously the date of the rearing, uh, the date of changing in stars, so the shedding, uh, the dates of them actually turning into a pupa and so on. So everything gets recorded. Um, as we mentioned, they can be found anywhere. So the things that you need to look for when searching for caterpillar is looking for eaten leaves, uh, looking for uh, the little droppings, so frass, as well as curled up leaves. Sorry, this is out of order. This was supposed to be in certain order, but apparently my presentation is not playing nicely, so you'll just have to bear with me. Um, another important thing, uh, and this goes especially for um, uh, all of you that want to rear and, and live in um, a dry area, all of the containers need to be well aired. Uh, not so much of a problem in, in, in humid parts uh, of Africa, like for example, Durban, KZN where I am, uh, but let's say um, Karoo, uh, where one of our um, rearers uh, lives, um, even a little bit of moisture can result in mold and a, a dead caterpillar. So uh, do make sure that once you have collected the caterpillar that it is um, placed in something that has um, airflow. So I can show you, for example, this is one of mine. It is just um, a glass jar with some netting at the very top so the air can come in and out. So they're not enclosed with no airflow. You do need to feed and clean them daily. So this is where um, the hardware comes in. So imagine if you have 50 or 60 caterpillars um, during kind of mid caterpillar craze season, uh, every single one of those caterpillars need to be changed. So you need to take out the uh, old um, tissue, you need to take out any leaves, any material that can result in mold, and then you have to replace it with fresh leaves, which obviously also have to be collected. So this can take a couple of hours a day if, if you do have some serious numbers. Um, I think most of took me at any given stage was about an hour to go through all of them every single day. So um, yeah, don't get too crazy unless you're ready to spend some time. Um, and this is just an example of some of my um, setup. So uh, in terms of photography, you need to take photos of everything, including the caterpillar, the pupa, the butterfly, everything, uh, but also food plants. So this is just um, an image of a food plant that I would submit to Herman when submitting my rearings. Uh, the middle photo, you can see my desk and my study with a whole lot of jars, with the food plants, with my camera. So all of this gets used daily. It's, it's quite a bit of work, but it's a lot of fun. 
um, and also in terms of keeping the notes and your data. Um, I do use a notebook, but I also like to keep everything online. So I personally use iNaturalist um, just to keep track of all of the photos as well as to link all of the different stages. So once I am ready to submit, everything is literally a click away. However, this is just my preference. If you do want to give it a go, you are more than welcome to use whatever system works for you, even if it's just an old fashioned notebook and keeping photos and data in folders offline on your computer, whatever works. So this is just the way I do it. So just an example of how it works in practice and what that looks like. And then submitting data. So um, data is submitted to Herman in terms of caterpillars and then Johan in terms of any parasites. So um, very often our caterpillars will end up being flies or wasps and those are also submitted. Those are also very valuable as data. So all of those end up in an email, photos get placed in a Dropbox folder and everything goes to the relevant people and data that is needed for submission. If you do want to give it a go, so this is all of the stuff that you do need to collect, are images of every single stage, um, ID or at least photographs of the food plant so it can be identified later on if you don't have it, as well as any dates of collection, preparation and emergence, and then locality, and in terms of locality, things you need to keep note of are your habitat, your location, your coordinates, and your altitude. Um, Again, if you are using um, an online tool, like let's say iNaturalist, uh, things like coordinates uh, and altitude, all of that gets collected for you if you are using an in-app or online system. So uh, just another thing to note, once you have all of that, you're good to go. And once you have submitted your first three ring to Herman, you are going to get access to um, a lot of info that no one else does. So you're going to get access to um, um, all of the previous three rings um, and records of um, other errors that have been submitted. So um, please keep in mind that it's worth submitting if nothing else then, because you're probably going to get access to the most up-to-date list and images of um, African caterpillars that exist. Um, because there is no official field guide, there's no official book. So what we are doing now um, is kind of the, um, the best resource. And just a couple of examples. So um, these are some of my um, recent rearings. So this little geometer, uh, sorry, not the geometer. So this little, oh, wait, sorry. Um, this little um, Myotis, sorry, I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce that. My Latin is not that good. It's been a while since high school, so please bear with me. But um, this little caterpillar feeds on ferns, which is quite unusual. Uh, fern feeders are fairly rare. Uh, ferns as such um, are um, quite ancient plants, so anything that feeds on ferns is quite interesting. Um, the moth is beautiful, but you can see all of the images and data that was submitted. Uh, right here, so different angles of the moth, the caterpillar, the beautiful colorful pupa, as well as the food plant. And then this is a very special one, I think uh, um, this is probably uh, my favorite one from the previous season. So this little geometer um, is something that has never been reared before. Um, and this is the kind of stuff that we do. So this has literally never been reared before. Obviously, the, the, the moth has been described by science and we know it exists, but the link between the caterpillar, this particular food plant and the moth has never been uh, made before. So this is something brand new that, we, that we've learned. And not only that, but this particular uh, geometer moth um, is the, the only species uh, of its genus in Africa and uh, in South America where it is more common it feeds on a completely different food plant and this particular food plant which is um, Croton sylvaticus which I read it on has never been recorded for uh, this uh, genus of moth ever. So obviously um, lots of interesting findings, um, the specimen has been put away and is going to be sent to Herman and is going to be used um, in um, DNA sequencing of the geometer family. 
um, it is one of the geometers that actually were missing um, for the DNA analysis. So yeah, really cool stuff. And just a couple more of my recent ones. So these are the very pretty ones. Um, uh, I'm not entirely sure if these have been read before or not because my latest uh, data submission to Herman hasn't been finalized yet. Um, however, um, just for you guys to appreciate some really beautiful moss. Um, I mean, whoever thinks that moss are boring and brown is very wrong just by looking at these images. Um, the caterpillar can even be as plain as the little green um, um, semi lupa that you see here, but have a look at the beautiful pink and golden uh, moss that it is absolutely stunning. And then how to get involved if you guys want to give it a go and if you want to um, uh, you know, do this in practice and start rearing yourself. There is a Caterpillar Rearing Group Africa on Facebook, so just search for this name. It is on the uh, request membership and you can get um, all of the uh, info that you need to get started there. And then we also do have a WhatsApp group. Uh, you can just email me your cell phone number. Um, this is my email and I will add you to the group. Again, that group is mostly all of us just going ooh and ah over caterpillars, but you can get some practical advice as well. And that's it. That's fascinating, Shin. Wow. Um, yeah, I, uh, I, have, I have a couple of questions on before we just go to anybody else. Um, your contributions personally, do you have uh, an estimated number of records that you've submitted to the project? Uh, gosh, good question. I don't think I keep track of it, but um, I think last season it was over a hundred successful rearings. So I, I do rear a lot more, however, about 30 to 40 percent of the rearings are unsuccessful, be it because uh, the caterpillars don't accept a food plant or they end up being a parasite or whatever the case may be but yeah over 100 uh, successful ones okay fantastic and um do you have any, any idea of the number of different species that uh you know records for which you've submitted <laughs> no <laughs> no idea okay um okay um yeah I, I don't know i suppose i personally don't really focus that much on, on on, on myself and my, my, my contribution in terms of numbers, um, I mostly just pay attention to, you know, when I read something that's brand new, um, like the little geometer from the previous one. Um, so that's the stuff that gets me excited um, and, mm. and I really, really enjoy. Fantastic. And <clears throat> again, just following on from that, do you have any idea of the number of firsts that you've been responsible <laughs> for? Um, <laughs> you showed I'll us one. i say, <laughs> yes. Uh, I would say between 10 and 15 of the firsts, uh, so the ones that haven't been reared before, so that's in the past four years. Well, wow, that's, that's amazing. You know, talk about citizen science. Uh, you mentioned the link between the experts and citizen scientists, but I think this is a wonderful example of um, people getting involved in something that they're passionate about, that they uh, are dedicated to, and uh, yeah, the massive contribution to citizen science. Um, we do have uh, just a couple of minutes for any questions. I see that Steve has been going through and, and answering many of the questions that, uh, uh, that people have been asking about things like, you know, do you collect the food plant when you find the caterpillar? Um, and how do you know what it eats? Well, very often they're found on the, the caterpillars are found on their, on their um, host plants in their food yes. plants. So, yeah, yeah. Great. Any any other questions from uh, from anyone? Well, thank you so much. There are lots of comments coming through um, in the chat box. Just uh, how everybody's enjoyed this pre presentation, Shun. So, and I think a, a wonderful presentation. Well done. You were you were a little bit nervous, perhaps, but uh, <laughs> yes. lovely lovely to hear. Lovely to hear from a citizen scientist who's extremely passionate about what they do and keep up the excellent work. And uh, we look forward to hearing more about it as time goes on. So thanks so much for being part Thank of this you. forum and for joining us. We really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Okay. Right. We're going to move straight on to... Sorry. 
Sorry, and yes, chat, bring them. Yeah. The yeah, I have just dropped a question in the chat box. So I was wondering if this project support data submission like uh, let you map database. Is that possible? Or they are using a different method in data submission? Um, yeah, yeah, it, it is different. So uh, LepiMap is a different project of Lipsop, Lipsop Africa. However, I, I do try and upload on all of my rearings to, Lip, uh, to LepiMap as well. So I, I do try and link the two, but there are two separate projects. That's good. Because that will help citizen scientists if they have access to the data, you know, you don't need to maybe, you know, send the caterpillar or rear the caterpillar, but you should be able to identify the butterfly even at the level stage across mm -hmm. Africa. Yeah. 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 We use it quite a, I use it quite a lot. I mean, if I, if I need an ID, that's one of the places where I go to, definitely. So, so if I just, uh, just butt in there and say that the, to join the CRG, you can't pay money to do it. You have to, the, the entry fee is a success, is a rearing, it doesn't have to be successful. You have to submit some data to the to the CRG, and it's and it's only done by. I mean, you can put it on Lepi Map. You can put it where you like. It's got to go to Herman by by email to get to, to count. Once you're there, he then gives you access to a Dropbox folder with all the thousands of records that they've done all over Africa. Um, they're all there in in PDFs, which you can search to your heart's content. And if, if you find something, you can go in there, and it's a, it's an amazing resource. And you get a nice little badge as well. That's the other thing too. So it's a fun thing. But there's nothing stopping you from logging it on the app as well. Yeah, because the reason why I asked the question, I think, is very, very important because I have been biomapping for almost uh, more than three years, and I have been collecting this data for the label butterfly. But I have never uh, submitted a single record to let him up because. I know it's mostly uh, they don't accept, oh, I don't know, they don't consider level stage. But now that I know, I, I, I think I should start sending the level stage also to let them up project. And I know a lot of other student scientists have this data. <clears throat> yeah. I see there's a, a, Lundy has just asked another, another uh, question. Um, how many hours on average do you spend uh, uh, a week looking at uh, your caterpillars, your eggs, oh and gosh. all that? Too many <laughs> if you ask my husband. <laughs> um, it's a full-time job. <laughs> well, having a toddler and a full-time job and doing this, it, it gets quite hectic. But um, during the actual like, proper season when I do have lots of caterpillars, it's, it's probably an hour to two hours a day. Fantastic. Gee, well, keep up the keep up the excellent work. Great. Okay.